This next section is going to cover an aspect of our jobs that has been gaining attention over the past few years. The problems we face in the wildland urban interface are rapidly becoming more and more complex. To deal with this increasing complexity, many urban areas have implemented some interesting and effective cooperative agreements with local municipal fire departments, which include shared radio frequencies and cross-training. To get us thinking about the various safety concerns when wildland fire approaches an urban area, let's go back to the Rough Diamond Fire in Idaho. You're about to see a clip from another operational briefing that was addressing the threat of fire on the historic town of Silver City. After viewing this clip, you'll be asked to get into your groups and talk about three tools that are available to you for use in these situations. In your incident response pocket guide, you will find the urban wildland watch out situations, the structure protection checklist, and the structure assessment checklist. You can relate the items on these lists to the rough diamond fire, or more importantly, you should relate them to urban interface issues that you face in your local area. The point of this exercise is to get you familiar with these tools and understand how they relate to issues in your area. My name is Dale Anderson. I'm currently the uh, structure protection uh, group uh, in charge of the structure protection group for Silver City uh, uh, community and we're working on the uh, rough diamond incident and uh, we're going to give a, a briefing here shortly and we need a kind of a, a brief overview from Eldon Alexander who was part of the tactical operation that worked uh, the previous day and, and uh, early that morning and Eldon if you could give us a current situation update off these maps here and then we'll kind of continue from there. Okay, like Dale said my name is Eldon Alexander. I was uh, initial tech IC type 3 on this fire. Um, during the transition I've been kind of attached to Division Alpha on this uh, south side of the fire uh, and come down here to help you guys uh, get a little idea of what's happening up here on the fire. Um, currently the fire is being held along the Silver City Road here around uh, Scotch Bob Creek drainage. You guys drill up, that, that's your access into this area. Where the fire line leaves the road here, we have hand crews constructing fire line up towards Bald Mountain. Bald Mountain has been uh, prepped with a dozer line coming up from the road also, and with every retardant being laid in, in this little saddle right in here. The dozer line made it as far as it could around Bald Mountain, that's why the hand crews are starting up towards it. Um, we're getting a little activity in this side, some torching, um, making some runs, but it's starting to it turn around itself and burn itself back into black, so it's not a real big concern right now. The other uh, high activity area is up here by Little Sugar Loaf. And you can see it kind of goes off this map a little bit with the perimeter. It's down in this drainage below Little Sugar Loaf. It's made a, a run up in that area. Um, those are the, the two hot points right now. The, what's the weather outlook for the uh, afternoon? Yeah, I got uh, max temps 86 to 89 degrees, relative right. humidity 8% to 13%, valley winds 13 up to 13 miles per, per hour. Ridge top winds northwest 10 to 20 miles with gusts to 25 miles an hour. So that's going right. to throw some influence on your fire behavior out there. What we're going to do next is get a little uh, overview from uh, Bruce Alcott, who is our structure protection uh, expert that we brought in with the, he's kind of our task force leader for our, for our five engines that we brought in. And Bruce, if you could kind of give us a little information on what you guys have already assessed as far as the structures, communities, uh, hazards, risks, anything related to that, it would be great. Right. Good. Yeah, we've been up and uh, had a pretty good view of the fire. We've got quite a distance between us and them, which gives us a little bit of preparation time. Uh, for our personnel, we anticipate that if there is a fire to encroach on Silver City, it'll be coming from up this direction or maybe in from this, this side a little bit. Uh, so what we'll be doing is uh, focusing on those structures that are on that outer perimeter there. So our crews will be looking at that. Uh, some of the things we uh, need to evaluate, obviously, are uh, we may have stored fuels here. We have uh, some propane tanks that uh, folks use. We may have stored fuel oil, uh, uh, gasoline, all those kinds of things. And so that creates a hazard for us, and we'll have identified those and know where they are and what we need to do to, to mitigate those. Uh, water supply, is, as is indicated, primarily our suppression water will come from what we brought with us and what we've got on the, on the tenders that have been brought in to support us. Uh, we also have, though, however, established three different drafting uh, points off of the creek here where we've uh, uh, got enough water that we can pump out of and use that to augment our supplies and refill apparatus if we can. Uh, the keys here, uh, obviously, uh, as a structure protection, we have to look at what our capabilities are and 
uh, be realistic about what we can accomplish. Our goal is to prevent it from getting to those structures. So we're assessing the uh, ground fuels that are around those structures to make sure what we can get away from them and uh, to keep the structures from getting involved in the first place. Uh, we feel like because of the nature of the fuels that are out there, we've got a pretty good option to, if, should it come in from this direction, we may be able to actually kind of herd the fire up around that way by uh, doing some back burning and uh, doing some other things that will help there. So that's what we're assessing there. From a safety standpoint, uh, all of our apparatus need to recognize that uh, uh, we've got a key point. Here's where we're headquartered. Uh, we've got one way out from this part of town, and that's across this little bridge down here. So we need to make sure we keep that access clear. Uh, there is another access road that comes in here just on the other side of that bridge. And we keep all of our apparatus need to be stay on the roads where they can get out quickly. Uh, we won't be putting them up in here. Uh, we've identified that uh, just uh, down the street and across is uh, down where the park is here is an area that we can seek refuge if we have to. That's a safety factor for all of our personnel to know. Good. And, and, but we still have residences here on location, local residence right. folks. And there, uh, there's a system in place now for if we need to uh, do a heads up and an evacuation, then the county sheriff from Hawaii is going to basically handle that. You, you guys had a chance to go out and take a look at it. and. Uh, and uh, I will go ahead and put that order in so we can get the supplement on the hose and some Mark III pumps and that type of stuff and kind of basically go from there. And then our early warning system will be basically on what the fire is doing. Of course, the visual indicators, the ver verbal indicators over the radio, so make sure all the frequencies are dialed in accordingly. And we've double-checked that so we know that's online. Uh, our locals are pretty much dialed in on, on uh, uh, keeping in touch with us, so we've got those contacts made. Now, for information standpoint, we do have information officer uh, John Skinner on location and here, and he's, he's, he's maintaining contact with our primary information folks. Uh, and uh, we didn't let news media come in this afternoon because it was going into the heat of the day, but they'll be in first thing in the morning. So when that starts happening, you'll kind of have a clue of what's going on with that. And, uh, and then also, when, when you get a chance individually, to make sure you look at your IAP for your assignments for the day. It's also in, going to include the medical plan because we have we have a process set up to cover the me medical, and then also it has attachments on the maps, safety message. It gives the fire behavior and the weather updates. It's got the communication plan in there, so double check your frequencies on your radios, and it's got the organizational list and the division assignment. So, uh, with that, any other questions? Other than that, I think we can continue our work and kind of go from there. So, good. Thanks. Thank With the introduction of so many new firefighters this year, it is extremely important to communicate with other firefighters on the fire line. We really can't afford to assume that people are experienced enough to know what's going on out there, especially in an urban wildland interface situation.